Is it time to rethink your entire portfolio? The idea behind investing in altcoins is getting higher returns than just keeping it in Bitcoin. Well, I'm adding one more cryptocurrency to that short list, and that is Chainlink. Will your portfolio, as it stands today, outperform the massive rally we're about to see from the Link token this cycle? If you're unsure, it's time to take a real good look at Chainlink, as its fundamentals and utility are the best in the entire space. Now, where did it all begin for Chainlink? It started off as an Oracle service, which if you're not familiar with what an Oracle service is, it pretty much takes data from the real world, feeds it into the smart contracts, and that is the information the smart contracts use to execute whatever parameters are set in that smart contract. So, no Oracle service, no Chainlink, no smart contract. Nothing works on the back end. Uh, so, no data, no smart contract functionality. Now, why is it number one, right? We call it the gold standard of Oracle services. Well, it's got longevity. It's been around since 2017. And since 2017, it's had zero failures. We've seen new projects like Pith come out, and this is nothing against Pith. This is not to FUD the project, but it did have that issue where the information at some levels was incorrect. And that can send shockwaves and a domino effect in smart contracts and moving money around. And if you're working on an immutable blockchain, there's really nothing you can do to recover those assets. Uh, think of it this way, right? Talk about why do people continue to use Chainlink? It's been around the longest. If you were going to wire $10 million to your mom in Germany, would you use a trusted institution that's been around for decades and transacted trillions of dollars? Or would you use the new wire service because it's a little cheaper that came to market a year ago? The answer is clear. You go with the one that's been around the longest, that has the longest track record and has had no issues. Chainlink has grown, though, from its Oracle service to service other blockchain needs, including interoperability, which is what we're going to talk about today in this video is CCIP and why that one protocol alone is going to out-trump everything else that's going to happen in the altcoin market. Now, let's talk a little bit about integration and adoption. Chainlink isn't just a standalone project. It's integrated into nearly every single blockchain. Major platforms like Ethereum, Polkadot, Binance Smart Chain, they all rely on Chainlink for secure and reliable data feeds. This level of integration ensures that Chainlink has a piece of every transaction that requires real-world data, making it uh, a necessity for every single blockchain to be able to have and to be able to use. This level of integration ensures that Chainlink has a piece of every transaction that requires real-world data, making it an indispensable part of the blockchain ecosystem. This is just the tip of the iceberg, as the long-awaited CCIP will expand to TradFi and the biggest institutions in the world. Speaking of the biggest institutions in the world, listen to what Larry Fink said just a few short months ago about the ETF, but more about the tokenized future of every single asset in the world coming to market and how we're going to talk about how Chainlink is going to play the biggest role in that entirety. So here is Larry Fink on Wall Street discussing this very promise. And we believe it's so important to be anticipating the next move. I would also say on the, on the beginnings of, um, of a ETF Bitcoin, we believe ETFs are a technology no different than Bitcoin was a technology for, for asset storage. We believe the next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets. And that means every stock, every bond will have its own basically QSIP. It'll be on one general ledger. Every investor, you and I, will have our own number, our own identification. We could rid ourselves of all issues around illicit activities about bonds and stocks and digital by having a, 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 a tokenization. But the most important thing, we could customize strategies through tokenization that is, if it's every individual. We would have instantaneous settlement. Think about all the costs of settling bonds and stocks. Mm. But if you had a tokenization, everything would be immediate mm. because it's just a line item. And so we believe this is a technological transformation for financial assets. I believe if, if you want to talk about like voting and voting choice and all the things, if, every, if we know every moment who is the owner of that stock and it's now time to vote, every individual who has ownership is identified and they can vote their own share. So Larry Fink talked about customization. Uh, we saw news today that Fidelity launched a tokenized fund, but they didn't use a public blockchain like Ethereum or Polygon or Avalanche or Solana. 
they use JP Morgan Chase's Onyx blockchain, which is a private blockchain. Now, how are we going to have an interconnected world with TradFi and Web3, Web2, break the barriers to entry down uh, if people are going to use private blockchains and not public blockchains? That is where CCIP comes in. And CCIP, although it might be something you just started hearing about, it actually was launched in 2021. This is from the uh, PressNewsWire.com. Chainlink announces cross-chain interoperability protocol. As you can see, are highlighted in the red, August 5th of 2021. So it's been a long time coming. Now, in simple terms, CCIP will allow private institutions, including banks, to tap into the blockchain and Web3 world. There is no other project that is doing this at scale with the largest institutions. Speaking of institutions, let's talk about the partnerships and pilots that CCIP and Chainlink have done. Uh, you got DTCC, the largest clearinghouse in the world, BNY Mellon, City, Swift, just to name a few. Let's start with the largest settlement layer in the world. You have DTCC. There's an article from their website, bringing capital markets on chain with DTCC and Chainlink. It is incre uh, increasingly clear that blockchain technology is likely here to stay with 97% of institutional investors anticipating tokenization will evolve asset management processes and 100 trillion dollars worth of assets in the u.s that could someday move on chain and the second paragraph here the headline is dtcc and Chainlink collaborate on swift's blockchain interoperability protocol now what is the importance of dtcc it does two quadrillion dollars of transactions every single year just to put that into perspective if you printed one dollar every single second since the dinosaurs roamed the earth over 63 million years ago, only now would you have printed two quadrillion dollars and they're strictly directly working with Chainlink to bring Web2 and TradFi on chain to Web3. Second big one here is Swift. Obviously, <laughs> the biggest uh, messaging layer in the world. This is how your money moves globally is through Swift. So this is an article from Swift.com. Swift unlocks potential of tokenization with successful blockchain experiments. And in their article, specifically names Chainlink, you can see here highlighted on your screen, working with more than a dozen major financial institutions and market infrastructure and Chainlink, which is a leading Web3 services platform. Swift has successfully demonstrated that it can provide a single point of access to multiple networks using existing secure infrastructure, Chainlink, thereby significantly reducing operational challenges and investment required for institutions to support the development of tokenized assets. Let's talk a little bit about banks, okay? Uh, the largest banks, some banks you probably bank with, including Citibank, BNY Mellon, uh, and others are completing test pilots and using Chainlink. Now, U.S. capital markets are worth approximately $40.5 trillion, and these are the markets that are going to be tokenized on-chain and move across different private and public blockchains using none other than CCIP. With CCIP in full effect, investing in Chainlink is like investing in the entire crypto space because it has its tentacles in every part of the market. So we talked about the importance of CCIP, but what good does that do for the LINK token? Let's talk about it. Speculation can only take a token so far, which is why real utility is key. Think about why did ETH rally back in 2021? NFTs, right? You needed Ethereum to mint. Talk about meme coins. You needed ETH to swap as it was a trading pair. And transactions, you need ETH for gas. So actual utility, instead of people buying it to see if price is going to go up, people have to buy it because they're using the network. Uh, Link will be the universal gas token of CCIP. Now, what does this mean? Every transaction that runs through CCIP will need Link for gas. This gives it what? Buy pressure. Well, banks and institutions have a war chest of Link tokens ready to use for future and current transactions. Also, you have speculators, right? You're still going to have the speculators, people uh, maybe like you watching, who's not going to have to move money across chain using CCIP. Maybe like, look, I see the potential and I want a piece of the pie, right? You would be known as a speculator. And so we're still going to have those people, right? They'll buy the token to speculate on everything Chainlink is going to do with CCIP, further driving the price up. You also have supply depression, right? Uh, Link token staking was introduced for the first time. Stake tokens are not liquid and illiquid tokens equal no selling or hardest selling. As you can see here from the Chainlink website, uh, this thing didn't even make it to the general public. And it was completely filled with over 40.8 million Link tokens 
that is currently staked on chain, illiquid, no sell pressure. We take a look at Chainlink hodlers by time held. You can see here from November of 2021, it has been steadily climbing. And I want you to pay attention to the blue line as this is holders of one plus years. And we are at current all time highs. Well, almost all time highs for link wallet addresses that have held for more than one year. We take a look at Chainlink's price currently with the current market dip, picking up Chainlink at under $15 with a market cap of, of $8.6 billion. Now ask yourself this question. Is there a disparity between the one project's protocol who's about to move and messages transact $40.5 trillion of future markets is working with the top institutions and banks and we're looking at an $8.6 billion market cap. I see a massive disparity there. I hope you do as well. Uh, I did get it to an all-time high market cap of $22.45 billion, which was around $50 to $55 per link token. I am hyper bullish on Chainlink. Uh, you look at their supply. Their max supply is around 1 billion tokens with 587 million currently circulating. Uh, and so... Everything we just talked about, right? The actual utility of the token, the buying pressure, the limited sell pressure. Uh, Chainlink could, this is going to sound crazy, $500 to $1,000 if everything CCIP is promising to do and everything that they've been working on with these large institutions and banks come to fruition. I think $500 to $1,000 Chainlink is not too far out of the question. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, do you think I'm crazy? Five hundred to thousand dollars, and how bullish are you on the, uh, are you on Chainlink? Let us know in the comment section. Also, come check out our live show Monday through Friday at two p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.